All right. Let's see here. So you guys got to work with me. We are, this is my first time doing a live, trying to put the computer on there and all that stuff. So um, I'm going to plan my garden and I'm using the planter app for that. So this is what it looks like. So this is an app that supports the Backyard Gardens podcast. Um, you can get it from Google, Apple Store, all that stuff. And we personally use and love this app completely. It's an all-in-one thing, and you're going to see how we use it. If there's not a link in the description during the live, there will be a link at the end for you guys to get a discount for the app. So just if you like it, just hold on. And when this is done, I'll double check and make sure it's all in there. But we're going to build, these are all the gardens that I've built over time. And this is this year's plan. So I'm going to put it together and I'm gonna take it one bed at a time. And this is my main garden. So I have another one because it's, so big i can't fit it on here just yet hopefully soon so we're going to build it out and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and add what i think is not going to be out of my garden in time for me to replant for spring hey mia how's the weather in spokane washington so we're going to add some plants and the first thing we're going to add is the garlic. So if you click on it, it'll give you all the information you need about garlic, all that good stuff, different varieties, companion plants, combative plants, all this fun stuff, pests, uh, beneficials, just you name it, it's got it on here. So what we'll do is we're now a click and hold, and I'm just going to make my row. And I'll zoom in so you can see. And so this is already planted inside of my garden. And then I'll come in and we are going to add onions. Whoops, my finger farted. And we'll just go through and add onions. So we won't be able to touch this for the spring planting. This will come out of our garden roughly around June, maybe July, but I doubt it. Man, that's cold, Mia. I feel for you. We're having a nice day. It's 65 here. I hate to be in here doing this, but we're going to get into the low 20s in about a week. Now, the wild card is going to be the Brussels sprouts. So, unfortunately, we're going to need to fill this bed up with Brussels sprouts. I'm starting to wonder if I'll be able to replant anything for spring. We will just have to wait and see. Because what I do is I'll make this plan and then I will go back and I will make another plan for summer and then things will start to change as we see where we need to put stuff because we're keeping in mind our crop rotation at this moment in time, which I will get into in future videos when the time is right. So don't worry about that. I'm not going to get into it too much right now because I need to focus on my plan but we will be talking about it. And so this bed is all cabbage. And so each one of these boxes is a square foot. And then we have kale in this row here. And so if you can see my cursor, this row right here is all bok choy, but we're going to be pulling all that out. But the greenhouse is already planted, so we're going to leave that out of the equation for right now. But what we have are these pots. We have this bed. Clearly, we have this bed and then this one for this section of the garden. And if I have time, then I'll go over to the wild garden as well. 
Um, but we're going to do start in the front. And so what I want to do is we're going to put more cabbages in the ground. And see how it's got a red dot here? That means it's combated. So I, I need to think about that plan a little bit and see what I can add to it that wouldn't be combative. So it can be combative because it uses the same nutrients, it has the same pests, all that kind of stuff. So I wanna be careful about what I'm gonna to add to it. But I have a number of things that I would like to put into this bed. So we're just gonna work around that. And let's see here, if I click on it, go to info. And if I scroll down, so combative to cabbage because it attracts pests and depletes nutrients. So this is a real tricky thing to deal with. I know that it's going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and plant in there because I'm going to be putting nutrients in the ground. And I already know as the temperature warms up, I need to be treating for pests. And so the pests, which are right here, you know, aphids, cabbage worms. Um, I've never had flea beetles. I don't really have slugs. I do get snails. And um, I know how to treat for these things. So what I'll be using is like a BT. It's organic. So I'm going to go ahead and walk the line and add those cabbages to it. And I think I just want to put a row of cabbages in. Because I already have all these here, which we're actually missing a few in here, but just for simplicity's sake, it makes it look a little bit better. So I'm just going to leave that like it is. Um, and then I want to put lettuce in it as well. So I'm going to scroll down and get the lettuce. Wake up. There we go. And see, it's not combative or companion or beneficial but that is okay. And I'm going to do a lot of lettuce this year. I like lettuce. Lettuce is good. And so this garden right here behind it's a little bit tricky because we came in and we added um, chicken poo to it. So it's got, bro it had broccoli in there that failed. So I don't want to return to it with broccoli and I don't want to go back into it with, um, any kind of root because the fresh chicken dew is in there. We were looking to plant this. If we're going to plant this bed, the earliest we could plant it would be a month from now. So that means the chicken dew would be in there 45 days, which isn't quite long enough for, you know, like foodborne illnesses and stuff. So I need to think about this. And one thing I like to do is I'll just come through here and scroll and see like what am I planting and it can kind of bring up some ideas about what I can put in it. Um, I could, I don't want to do a root because that'll actually be growing in it. So I need to kind of reevaluate the situation, but I already know what I want to put in there in the summertime. So that is, you know, information that I can use for myself. Um, you know, honestly, the best thing would be to put broccoli back in there, but I think I'm going to hold off for right now and see what space is left after all of this stuff. Oh, thank you, Mia. I'm so glad you enjoy all that we do. We try to cover all bases wherever people want to do it so people can learn to grow. Um, so we're going to come to this bed, and this one's another really easy bed. So last year I grew potatoes here. So this year I'm growing them here. So we can go through and just add our potatoes. And if you guys have questions at any point, by all means, just speak up. You know, I'll, I'll look over and catch them. So we're going to add our Irish or white potatoes to this bed. And I like to do full beds of these because, you know, it's a once and done deal. So we can get them out of the ground and get something else in its space if needed.
And now that leaves us with this bed here, which also has fresh chicken dew. So um, reach out and touch faith, Dread. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I don't know which one, but yeah, always love God. So I put these pots that actually have four pots up against here and this one. So I can change these now, which I guess I can do. So I'll change all of these. Just to make it look a little bit more beautiful. This is the fun part about this app. I love this app, man. I'm so glad they're sponsoring the podcast and us because it really is a beautiful thing. And so what we can do, it's fun to play with, man, I'm telling you. Let's just go through, delete, and let's put a pot here. So I have big pots here too. These are not small pots by any stretch of the imagination. So we are going to I don't know if this is going to make one big pot. Eh, it'll be all right. So you just have to imagine those as being one big pot. Now, what do you guys like to put in your containers for spring? Let me know that in the in the uh, chat. Hey, Dread, if you could just put stuff in one thing, that'd be great. It's a lot of dinging going on, so I appreciate it, but um, you can't be commenting like that. So, if these are all pots, I like I have cabbages in some of them now. So we could actually do, can I find the cabbages? Yeah. You can actually do about, I would say two cabbages in each of these pots. And these pots are pretty large. They are, uh, I want to say they're, two feet wide so I've got them um, like this and these are all empty so I'm going to go through and I'm going to add broccoli to this one I'm not worried about this right here because their containers are separated and I think I'm going to actually add broccoli to this one as well so I'll put two broccolis in each of those pots so you can see how we're building it out. Now we've got these, these are trellises that I have. So this is my cattle panel trellises. And these are just regular trellises running up the garden. So we're going to come through and I think I want to put peas. I'll show you where I'm going to put them. I am going to put my peas here. And they're nitrogen fixers, so I don't need to add any nitrogen to them, which is going to be good because as these cabbages and Brussels sprouts come out, I won't have to add anything extra as far as nitrogen goes. And then back here, so this bed has all the manure in it still, but I've turned it over. So I think what we'll do is we're going to add broccoli to that one as well, now that I've thought about it. I think it'll be enough time between we get the time we get the plants in the ground to the time that we harvest them that the manure will break down enough and we won't have to worry about a foodborne illness. 
So that's going to be all broccoli. And I like to keep them that way because it's just easier for me to manage all that. All right. And then what we'll do is I'm going to go back now and I'm going to build the wild garden. So this is the wild garden. This is an old plan that we had created. Um, and we're going to delete everything from it and start from scratch. Hey, Dredd, I'm going to tell you one more time to stop doing that, and I'm going to ban you from the channel. I don't care. Like, you got to stop, man. It's frustrating. I can't see anybody else commenting. This is time consuming. I'm going to ask the developer because he said so the great thing about this app is he's constantly updating it. And I'm going to see if we can't just get like a, you know, delete all feature when you copy a garden over. All right, so this back row right here has some kale. We have two plants of kale, not much. And I actually have them spaced a little bit farther out, so I'm gonna drag it out. And then we have collard greens in the back, which they're not doing very well, so we need to work on that. But this bed's totally empty. This bed can be redone and this bed can be redone. So we're wide open. Uh, yes, I have heard of orange peels in the garden, but um, they don't break down fast, Mia. That's the problem I have. So eventually what happens is you just get like an influx of orange peels in your garden. And also, um, once they start to break down, I've been fighting slugs for a while. And um, it's just been, or not slugs, snails. And they will actually end up attracting snails. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start in this garden up here. We're going to add, I really want carrots to grow in that bed. I really, really, really want carrots to grow in that bed. That's my son's bed too, by the way. So uh, he's nine years old. So we're gonna go ahead and I think we're just gonna give him a full bed of carrots. That's what he likes. He loves carrots. And if you guys have never had carrots and dipped them in hot mustard, it's, uh, it's brutal. Yeah, I've been slugging it out. You could say that, Greg. <laughs> hey, Frosty. So um, the next bed we're going to do is I'm going to work on this big bed here. And like, as you can tell, I've really gotten into these monocropping plans, which is great. But then down here, it's so big. I have a lot of extra space that I can work with. So I like to kind of work it out a little bit. Um, and I'm not against doing anything like splitting it up, but like we're going to do rutabagas. And you can put four rutabagas in a square foot. So we're going to do a whole row of those. I think that'll be enough because we've already done enough rutabagas for the year. So I don't need a whole lot of rutabagas. And I've done turnips and rutabagas, but I just like rutabagas more. They're, they're bigger. They're better. They have more flavor. They're easier to use. And they're not really as watery when you cook them. So we're going to stick with that. And I think I want to do some radishes as well. But actually, before I do the radishes, this is going to be a long crop. So, 
I need to move it over. I want it in the back because this is a about a 90 day crop. So I know I, I don't know if anybody saw this in the beginning, but if you want to get this app and it's not in the description, then we will uh, put it in the, the link in the description that will give you a discount to the app. Damn, bro, you are testing my nerves. And unfortunately, I don't know how to take care of it right now, but not to worry, everybody. I will figure it out. I'm trying to keep my cool. I'm just about to cuss somebody out and it ain't gonna work out. Like, I don't care if you unfollow, I don't care what you do, bro. But you can you can go to hell. Like straight up being a dick. Troll all you want. Move. All right. So now that we've got that, I'm gonna put some radishes in. And I don't know if they're gonna be combative. Nope. So we can add those in, but they're quick turn crop. So we're going to do just a solid row because it's 16 per. Um, just ignore him, guys. He's obviously a troll. He's got a bunch of stuff going on. Like, whatever. Who cares? Just ignore him. Frosty, why can't you do a spring garden? And then 16 per square foot, you can multiply that by eight. I don't do math in public much because it makes me look dumb. I would do more lettuce, but I think we're good on lettuce. Last year I did two rows and it was a lot. So actually I want to do a little bit of kohlrabi. So I'll do a row of kohlrabi and let's finish this out with a root bed. Maybe I'll do some turnips. No, beets. Beets is going to be a good one. Oh, 4B. That's cold, man. When's your last frost date, Frosty? And so we lucked out and we have a uh, companion planting here. So a beneficial planting. So that's what these green dots mean. So you can see we've built out a root bed at this point. So that should work out pretty good. Um, these will store the rutabagas and the beets will store for a long time. So if we harvest those around our first frost, we should be running out of those vegetables. I'd say roughly early June. And then everything else kind of goes from there. So the um, the radishes, you know, you eat through fast. And the kohlrabi actually holds for a long time, too. So we've got these last two beds to do. Uh, let's do a bed of spinach. I think that is a good idea. Can you have too much spinach? I mean, really? May 21st. That's crazy. So when do you think you would be planting, Frosty? Like, what's the earliest you think you can put something like a cabbage in the ground? Something like that. And I've never grown leeks. That's something that I might try next year is leeks. I don't want to do any more bok choy. You know what? I could do some more cabbage. Because we need to, we are running low on, um, What's it called? Sauerkraut. So let me put another row of cabbage in there. And just because I put cabbage in here, 
it doesn't mean that we're only doing like regular cabbages. I'll also grow Napa cabbages. Um, I have those Caraflex cabbages that we just started hardening off so we can put those in. So let's do a front row of cabbage. Yeah, you know, Greg, I just, I, I'm not getting into the leeks for soups, but I've made like sauces with them and I do enjoy the leeks and the sauces. So it is good. So April 15th to April 30th, I would imagine that you could get something in the ground about a month before that. You'd have to be careful, I'm sure. I'm sure it's pretty cold where you are, Frosty. Pretty sure it is, but... Um, and so the benefit of my area, which I don't know if you've noticed, is I don't have to replant. I keep looking over here because this is where the screen is that I'm reading the comments at and all that stuff, but I don't have to put um, replant kale, mustard, collards, any of that, any of like your real hardy greens, I don't have to replant them. So if I can get them going in the fall and keep them alive, they will grow just fine all the way up until um, spring. So that kind of works out in my favor where I don't have to replant. But if for some reason I had a failure or something like that, then I would. But it really saves on me doing the, um, the starting on my seed shelf and stuff like that. So I do... I do like that about my area. Now I was saying something and I just forgot. So I could do, I already have parsnips in that bed. Actually, that front row is parsnips. I forgot that. So I need to. This is all parsnips right here. I got them planted late, so I'm hoping to get a spring harvest, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. And then I guess we'll finish it out with cabbages. Wake up. There we go. And so if you weren't here earlier, these red dots mean they're combative. And these are combative because they use, um, they have the same nutritional and pest problems, but we already know we're going to treat. So we're not really worried about it. And we know we're going to feed. Yeah, I'm in um, Eastern North Carolina, Mia. So that is my wild garden, which in truth moment, isn't the best for my area, for my growing space right now. And I'm contemplating moving it next year. If it doesn't do well this year, I've got soil compaction issues that I've been fighting. So if I can get that under control, get it more productive, then we're going to keep it. But if not, then what I may do is move this part of my garden out to my main garden and then put a honey shed out there. So that's something that we may do too. Yeah, watermelon doesn't do good when a lot of rain. We're pretty blessed here where we get a lot of, um, a lot of dry, well, it's not really blessed, but you know, it works out for that, that it's really dry. So we don't get a lot of issues with rain, but the humidity kind of gets us because that causes the, the, you know, the issues with disease and stuff like that. No, we haven't, Mia, we haven't had snow here. And I think we had an ice storm three years ago. We just had a major storm roll by. We got like 80 knot winds, which is like nine, no, it's 70 knots. So it's about 80 miles an hour. And it actually did snow, but it was 65 degrees during the storm. So no, we do not get blizzards here ever. The last time we had a measurable snow here was seven years ago. But what we do get is we get really warm days and then really 
cold days. I know a lot of you guys, especially people in here, apparently are from colder sections, but it does get cold. And, um, you know, we're going to get it's 65 today. And in 10 days, it's supposed to be 20 degrees at night. So, you know, we have these drastic fluctuations, which can give us a false sense of hope. And then if we want to, just for grins and giggles, we can go back here and we can do our greenhouse, which I have a video coming out. I just planted some stuff in the greenhouse. I'll show you like on the layout how it looks. Um, I just put these, I wonder if it'll change the picture. Let's see. So you can change the variety too if you want. I don't know if it's going to be in here. Yeah, it's a specialty variety. So you can change the varieties in there if you want to get really down and dirty like that. And then in the back row, we have two kale. And they don't have a mustard plant on here. So what I use is a mustard flower. And then here we've got some lettuces. And then we've got our spinach. And I did a full bed of spinach just to see how it would do. Which is doing okay. So that's what's going on here. Now this bed is the question mark. I don't know what I want to do with it. Um, I kind of want to leave it blank and prime it for the corn because I didn't do very well with corn last year and I want to give it a good, you know, the good old college try. So we'll see what we can do. But um, I may end up coming back and putting something in here. Oh, no. I take back everything I just did in the wild garden. I forgot. This is why it takes me so long to do these things. Yeah. So this one all has to be potatoes because my son wants to grow a bunch of potatoes this year. So we have to change it. So we're going to have to make some changes. Because potatoes for us are a one-shot deal. You can grow them in the spring and the fall is questionable. So you may or may not, and we grow our potatoes now, and we don't have to buy any potatoes for the year. Usually by the time the potatoes are done, the sweet potatoes are ready. You know, we've eaten through most of the regular potatoes, so we can go through and then um, just kind of work through that, and we rotate our diets through the year like that. But he wants to grow potatoes, so we're going to do a whole bed of potatoes which means this is going to have to be the root bed. All right. So Mia says last year I was able to grow watermelon, personal size cantaloupe and ooh, honeydew and cantaloupe. Yeah, they have um so I see Frosty said that he is trying to grow watermelon. Have you looked for like a cool um environment, cool weather environment to do something like that? And you know, uh I don't know how the term to use. Cool weather made for cooler weather. Have you tried something like that? That may work. Um you can also, I mean, it seems kind of weird, but knowing for me, it seems weird, but for you, like you could put a cover over it and do like a, like a modified low tunnel 
where the load tunnel doesn't go all the way down, but it stays like halfway. You have the option to put it down. You could do something like that if you really wanted to. Um, that may work well. What's a Jerusalem artichoke? This is new. Oh, I know what that is. I, somebody gave me that and said it'll make you really gassy. But I heard it was good. So there you go, everybody. That is... Oh, I need to find one more root. My bad. Let me find one more root for y'all. One more. Let's do the radishes. I think that's going to be a good round out. Whoops. Yep. So, uh, early maturing varieties are good. Yeah. I just think it, you know, if your weather is real cool, you need to add heat. Does the program keep them? Well, Mia, let me show you. These are going back. So this is before I expanded this year. This is last year's garden plan. So you can see how I built it out. Um, this worked pretty good, but everything else worked really well. So I have that. Yeah, that goes back to so I was 22. And then I did some tests here. You'll, you'll see where it says test. And I was testing out what it would look like for different things. So yeah, it does hold back from all the different years you can compare. And this is what I talk about on the podcast a lot, which if you guys aren't familiar with, it's the Backyard Gardens podcast. Is using this platform to go back and you make, you know, if you can compare... This is this year's garden for spring. And then going back and doing last year's garden. Nope, that's another one I did for this year. Uh, let's see. Right. Or for fall. So either way, you can see the difference. Um, so yeah, I can go back and say like, hey, I planted this here. I need to rotate it around, move it, do stuff like that. There you go, Mia. That's a good idea. I don't know what this one is. Okay, so this is my rough summer plan. So this is, I'm going to come back and do a full plan because I can already see where there's going to be changes. But um, this is my rough summer plan for this year. So we'll come back and I will make that again. And when I do that, I'm going to start talking more about crop rotation because in the summertime and for the summer crops, at least for me, it's really important. <laughs> Somebody has been listening to the podcast. So W Joe says, uh, I will not grow squash outside anymore due to the little bastard. Have you grown it in a greenhouse? I understand I'd have to self pollinate. Not sure it's worth it. So I just did, we just recorded a podcast where I talked about squash in the greenhouse. Um, I am not interested at all in doing any kind of self-pollination, hand pollination. I've done it. I don't like it. I don't have time for it. Um, between running 11 garden beds, a greenhouse, raising chickens, doing bees, podcasts, YouTubes, and other things that we're taking on. It's not something that I'm really interested in. Um, what I find is um, it grew fine in there, but it got so hot. That being said, for the little bastard, which is the squash vine board, which I have, I dubbed it a couple years ago on the podcast, um, what I did this year, and I will talk about this in another video, 
is I created the dirtiest crop in my garden, meaning that I had to treat it with an organic spray, completely organic spray every week and was able to get full blown harvest off of my squash this year. So I did eventually succumb to the squash vine borer, but I was able to get harvest off of all of my plants. And if you go back into my videos somewhere in there last springish to give you a time range somewhere between May and June or July, there's a small time frame where I did one and I remember sitting back and saying, will you look at this? This squash bed is absolutely amazing. It was beautiful. But, <clears throat> and I, I don't like using the term dirty because it was organic and I have zero problems treating with organic pest spray, which I personally feel that if you don't, if there was no kind of insecticide and we'll just leave it at organic for right now, the world would starve. We know what we all suffer with. We know what we all fight and we all know what we deal with, but educate yourself and what you're doing and what you're using, you know, to spray and you can make it so that you can in fact have a more productive garden. So that's how I was able to do it. Um, I did use some other techniques, but that was the main thing that I did. So yeah, if you can get, so TCAT, exactly right. If you can get something that is self-pollinating, I don't even know if they have something like that. Um, you can, I would definitely try that out. I don't think that would be an issue. Um, and you know, I was just planning in the greenhouse video come out like next week or something. Um, and I was saying that, you know, specific planting areas need specific plants, varieties. And I think that's how we can use it to our advantage. So Mia, yeah, that's good. Yeah. If you have that option, I don't really have that option. So, um, Cape Fear Preps, the podcast comes out every Thursday, and then generally the first Friday of every month, our subscriber and patron episodes come out, which this year we're focusing on talking about how um, what we do each month in the garden between myself and Batavia. So I'm in coastal North Carolina, and she is in the Chicago land area. And so we focus on that throughout those to kind of give people a better idea of what we can do. No, don't look for the squash in the podcast. It's on the YouTube channel. Um, or you, you can listen to what I was just talking about. It should come out February 1st. But um, this is the one where I was like how pretty it was. It was in the, my YouTube channel. So you can see it there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the LB, we, we got tired of saying squash vine borer, so I called it the little bastard. Well, Aaron, you're more than welcome. Thank you for being part of our crew. And so just so you guys know, I know you kind of see this area up here. What this is, this is actually where my beehives are were, but what I did a couple years ago is I buried a bunch of chicken crap from our coop and then I took pots and I cut the bottoms off of them and put them in to try and grow. Never really worked out. So this was left over. So this has grown each year. It's like the original plant that just keeps growing and growing and growing. And um, these are mulch that I would love to put in my garden. I just, I just never get around to it. What can I say? I'm slack. Anybody have any more questions? We give you about five more minutes fire away if you got anything you want to know I just like messing with this app this thing is fun Parthenocarpic is the term, I think. They're just harder to find seeds since it's all hybrid. I have a bunch of grubs in my squash pots. You know what? 
You're welcome, Mia. Let's look it up real quick. What do you say? If I want something special to you like that, generally the first place I go is Johnny's because they have a lot of like hybrids and stuff like that. Doesn't mean I'm going to buy from there because they are expensive, but it gives me a good idea of what is, you know, what's out there. There you go, yellow crooked neck. That doesn't seem right. I might have to type that big, long, fancy word. It says it's open pollinated. There you go. Don't tell me that. I don't want to have to order something new. There it is. All right. T Cat says, I had three years of great squash before the little bastard found me. Thanks for the content. <laughs> no problem. Becky, the app is the planter app. Um, if you want, if you're going to get it and it's not in the description now, I will put the link in the bottom. Uh, after this is over so you can get the discount that we have he offers it's like a 30 percent discount or something crazy for a lifetime membership so it's like a one-time deal so um if you do that it's great i don't know about the free version because as soon as i saw it i bought it but um yeah aaron's using the free version but we can definitely i'll put that into the description and uh, you guys can get that and use it um, like I said, I love this thing. So, and he's actually continuously building it. It's going to end up being a one-stop shop for planting everything from seeds to planting to harvest from, and are adding other things to it. <clears throat> the, the, when the blow came by, it wasn't bad. Like I was telling everybody before we had, I think they clocked 82 miles an hour down the street from us and, um, we didn't have any issues. Thankfully, we, I did have some pots that were around the garden that I haven't filled up with dirt yet, but I was using them as trash cans. So now there's trash all over my yard, which I got to clean up. So it's kind of annoying. And I've been trying to film videos around it, and it's just frustrating me. No, nah, Becky, you, you want to support this in backyard gardens, definitely check out the Planter app. I, I talked to the um, creator the other day. Man, dude's super smart has a garden he's not just some guy that's sitting there coding he like legit knows what he's doing and i think he understands what a gardener wants which is something that i like because when i was looking for it i think um what is it better homes and gardens had something similar but it was only on the computer and it was like 300 dollars. but this i can use on my phone tablet and computer so it works out good especially for this so definitely check it out um, we don't get any commission from it, but you guys definitely get a discount, which I recommend. So, all right, you got about two more minutes. Fire. I know there's a lag, so. Oh, you guys had it bad in, in uh, Alabama? That sucks. I had a tree fall on my garden one year. It was kind of depressing. But you know what? I got firewood out of it, so it worked out well. Who's planting their gardens? Tell me you guys have planned your garden. And just to give you an update, we I know everybody's been dealing with our reruns from the podcast, so we are now redo we're making new episodes and we're being really focused this year trying to get you guys going in the right direction my goal for the year is i want to create an army of seed starting fiends that are just going to have super successful gardens doing what they love to do but saving a lot of money in the process and i mean seed starting is 
the ticket. You know, that's the only way I can afford to do all of this stuff. So, okay. Well, I'm glad it helped you, Becky. So, uh, Fire Tree, I did, I have one of, actually, if you're looking at the screen, this pot right here, I put in four rows, and there are many rows, don't get me wrong, of radishes, and I was pulling out, you know, radishes like that big, I was surprised. So, I'm going to actually do the same thing. Um, this is all subject to change as I see fit, so. Central Fowl? I don't know what that is. Oh, Florida. Yeah, so you should be planting stuff already. Yep, February 15th sounds about... What are you putting out February 15th, Danny? I would show you my seed starting shelf, but I can't pick my computer up and move it. But I've got two trays of broccoli, two trays of cabbages, a tray of mixed lettuces and Chinese cabbage, and a tray of rutabaga on there now. And I've got sweet potatoes that I'm trying to get to chit now. So once they start... Um, we'll get those going so we can make slips. I want to try and sell some sweet potato slips this year to people locally. So we've got a couple of those. And what's the what what day of the month is it? It's the twelfth. So I've got about just shy of two weeks before I put out the video about what I'll be plant starting in February and planting. So it should, you know, hopefully that stuff helps you guys too. Yeah, Mia, setting up your seed starting area is just do it right. Take your time and make it easy on yourself. Um, the way I like to tell people when they do stuff like that, if you're serious about it, is don't jackleg it. You know, just do it the way you think it should be done. That's going to make it easy so you can work through your seeds. And it, it works a lot better. You know, not having to dance around and things falling down and all that stuff doesn't work out well. <clears throat> Now, Danny, I'm going to have to tell you, we shouldn't be planting brassicas and squash and tomatoes at the same time. If I were you, and this is just a suggestion, you're welcome to take it or leave it. I would, if you want to plant brassicas and you didn't start them yet, I would get some transplants and get them in the ground to see how they do now. So when you go to put your other stuff in, you can rotate out because brassicas and tomatoes, typically speaking, should not be harvested at the same time. By the time you get your tomatoes in the ground, you should be pulling out your brassicas, if not around the same time, very shortly after. Tammy's got it going on. Cabbage, kale, chard, spinach. Wow, overnight germination, WJR, that's really good. So I don't use heat mats for my brassicas. Um, I only use them for my tomatoes and stuff like that. Well, that's awesome, Becky. I hope that it works out for you. I hope you get the production you want. Um... If you go onto Amazon, I believe we have heat mats in there that we use. And if I'm not mistaken, the link that's in the description, again, if it's not in here, I'll copy everything over. It should be a double pack of them that we use. So I'll double check that as soon as I get off here. I would do it here, but I don't want everybody to see my password. But um, that way we can get that up and going for you. So actually, if you guys keep chatting, I think I can do it without messing everything up. I think. Ooh, Ben just got big. 
Yeah. And my name's not Sandy. I'm going to keep saying that until people stop calling me Sandy. My name is Ben. Mm hmm. All right. Where is NE? Is that New England? WJR? Let me see what's on this thing for you. Because the thing is with this, and I mean, clearly I want you guys to go to the Amazon link so that you can, you know, we can get a little bit of kickback. But the real benefit of it is these are all the products that we we use or use both Batavia and I. Um, so we know that they're decent. Oh, Becky's about to start building. Zone 7A. I know it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It doesn't matter. I respect you, though. I respect it. There's just not a good way to say it. There's just not a good way to say it. That's my problem. Northeast Mid Atlantic. Got it. I'm checking right now to see what all is on the Amazon list because I had some people saying that stuff wasn't there. So I just want to make sure. Well, hi, you're close to us, Chris, Christian. Is that Chris? Yeah, Christian. All right, let's see. Do we have... So we've got... <clears throat> yeah, we've got the double pack of Heat Max on there. Wow, they're 47% off, too, for a two-pack. So definitely check that out. Um, those are the ones I use. So I have three total. I had a company give me one, and then I bought these two. And the two that I bought work better than the company I bought. And they don't have thermostats, but I don't need thermostats. I've never had an issue. So I just try that out. Um, I'm glad I went on here because they've got plant tags that I need to buy. Yep, so everything's on there that you need. Cool. Is there a link to the... There's something blocking my screen here, Mia. Give me a second. Yes. Yes, the light's on here right now. Unfortunately, inflation caught them and they went up in price. But they are on there. Um, and even though they went up in price, I still recommend them. They're worth the money. I mean, you're getting six lights, so you're getting a lot of light. I'm glad you came across the channel too, Andy. Welcome. So, guys, building out seed shelves and stuff like that, I'm proud of y'all. It's it's tough to do, man. It It's, you know, the first year you seem like you're just dumping money into it. But if you think about it, I have one shelf started. Um, and on that shelf, I have probably $200 worth of seedlings on that shelf if you were to go to a store. And then we have three other shelves. And once we get into tomatoes and stuff, we grow thousands and thousands of dollars of seedlings. So off this shelf that you saw in my video. So it's definitely worth the money. Um, I, if the link is not in the description, it will be in the description as soon as this, as this is over. If I cannot add it now, which I will try to do as we speak. Um, a little unprepared. I do not go live often. 
which I'm hoping to change. And it, by the way, thank you guys for sticking through the troll earlier. That guy was a dick. But what can I say? I can't control everybody, and I don't have this figured out. I guess maybe I could get somebody to moderate and kick people out, but that's the first time I've had that. Oh, the podcast comes out at four in the morning, dog. Like, I put it out there early because I, I run by farmer hours. So I get up before the sun comes up, and I don't go to bed till right around. I mean, I go to bed early. Let's put it that way. So I put it out there, and I know you're an early person. So it's out there at, like, four in the morning. Um, <clears throat> the idea is that it's waiting for people to be ready, to, you know, to go. So... Yeah, I can't get to put the uh, link in here, but it'll be in there. I'm sorry. What can I say? I make sure I got everybody. Northern Alabama, gotcha. Gotcha. So before we go, I know we've got a few people in here. Um, what do you guys want to see on the channel? So when you guys comment and you talk, I pay attention. And when I see repeated subjects, that's kind of the direction I want to go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys, seed starting is definitely something that I'm going to talk about, but that's going to run out. And we're going to get into fertilizing because I've been talking to a few people and there's a lot of misnomers about fertilization. So we're going to get into that. But is there anything else you guys want to talk about within the realm of possibilities? And I'm, I'm going to carve a space out for my bees, for people. They haven't been the most popular videos, but it's part of what I do and it's part of who I am. And so I do want to share that with the world. I saw that when I first came. Gotta love trolls. <laughs> you know, man, I mean... Whatever. Everybody ignored it. They did their thing. They didn't get a reaction and they're gone. It's just how it is. You know, people suck. I don't think they understand they're in a room full of gardeners who are used to being by themselves and we don't really care. Uh, yeah, Becky, companion planting is going to be one of those things that I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to forewarn you. Um, I don't look at it like everybody else. So um, because I employ different methods throughout the year, I look at companion planting, um, crop rotation, all that stuff a little bit different, and I've modified it to work for myself, which I think is really important. Thank you, Dan Lowe. Um, yeah, you know, the, the, this is something that I've noticed in my area um, I see people and I drive around. And so one of the things I love to do, like, so I surf a lot and every time I go to the beach to surf, I pass by numerous gardens and I, there's some off roads and I go by and I look at people's gardens and I love it. And come about July, the gardens empty out and then there's nothing left. And then I go home and I look in my garden about August and I'm pulling vegetables out. I'm planting plants and I'm like, man, why are these people not planting? Like, I just don't understand it. And I know a couple of them are um, older people, so they can't really get out in the heat and that I understand. But some of them aren't and I don't understand why. So I want to make sure that, you know, I want people to grow the food that they can grow and maximize their time. And you garden because you love it. And I don't think it's something that should be loved two months out of the year. I just don't. <laughs> so Christian, I, uh, you know, I've threatened to make shorts and stuff with my bees with uh, Wu Tang, you know, killer bees. And um, I always joke with my son. I'm like, these are my bees. They're our killer bees. And I've, I've told him that I was going to train him to kill. And every time he sees him, he's like, have you trained him to kill yet? Are they killer bees yet? So um, I feel you.
So Mia, you just want to see me in my garden? Because I can make that happen. So Stephen, it's, um, you know, it is getting colder, but you know, I, we just, in our area, uh, as Cape Fear, I see you wanted more of the chickens. We can, I don't do a lot with my chickens. That's my wife's room. I just take care of them, but I can show you more of that. Um, it's getting colder, but we just came out of a period where we didn't even have cold winters. So it's like, it's really weird. And it's something like a lot of people are screaming. Um, now I'm going to preface this with my opinion, but they're screaming global warming, global warming, global warming. And I'm just not seeing that like it, you know, global warming isn't just warming temperatures, it's extremes. But there's also weather patterns that we should know, especially as gardeners, like farmers know all this stuff. And we, we are nothing but micro farmers. That's what we are. So um, <laughs> I do hashtag Wu-Tang Wednesday, LOL. Yeah, I feel you. Um, so it's just one of those things. But I do. It's been a fairly cold winter here. It hasn't been really cold, but it's been consistently cool. So I feel you there. Okay, Elizabeth, so we do talk about pest control. I did a couple videos last year, but I'm going to do that again because there's definitely some people that have asked for that. So T-Cat, yeah, I don't do the, um, I don't pull my peppers out in over winter. I know people do. That's not my thing. So, okay, first of all, it's Kristen, so I, I thoroughly apologize for saying your name wrong, and I think that's a really good thing. Uh, we do have some listeners and some followers on um, the YouTube channel that are handicapped, that get out in their gardens, and they do really well. Um, I respect that. That's, that's touching because people, you know, I don't think you should be limited to what you can grow. And um, I know people, husbands, like I know one lady that we've talked to, her husband's making her a custom bed for her because she's in a wheelchair and she can get on work and she's like, it just brings her joy. So I can, I can totally respect that. So if you want to overwinter your pepper plants, you got to dig them up, put them in your garage, and then the next year they'll produce. They don't generally keep producing all winter it's it's a nightmare in my mind but i have my garage is full of either beekeeping equipment or tropical bonsai trees i keep warm so i can't bring myself to do that yes yeah, succession planning is something that i'm pretty passionate about but i'm kind of changing well okay Succession planning and seasonal planning are two different things. So I'm not really succession planning, like put, take grow uh, green beans, put more green beans behind them. I do some of that, but planting appropriately, like the way I have been, I found that it's different. So I can, I'll definitely get into that. Um, I do garden tours at the beginning of the season. I mean, to be honest, garden tours are filler for me. If I have a schedule that I set for myself, if I don't have something that I really want to talk about, I will throw in a garden tour. But typically I do them in the beginning and end of a season and then usually once in between. But I can do a couple more, especially as we keep going up for that. Uh, Kristen, if you want to email me, I don't really have an email. I have an email address out there, but it's for custom seed starting plans that I've been selling. Um I don't really have a way to, I can't communicate with everybody. The best way is through the comments on the YouTube channel. Um, it's just, it's too much. I'm trying to handle, you know, managing all that. Um, if you listen to the podcast on Spotify, we do weekly questions. So we'll pick a question. We try to get to all of them. And we also have a Facebook page for the podcast. That's called Backyard Gardens Community Podcast, or, um, Community Garden. And that's where people can go through and we can communicate with them and stuff like that. So that's the best way to do it. 
I can't just answer emails constantly. It's just, it's too much. Well, big sky dreamer, I'm glad you're here. I hope you're dreaming of a good garden. Ah, uh, got it. <laughs> My name was pronounced wrong for a long time and it always made me mad. All right. Cape Fear Preps, I tip... I can sell bonsai. I have a number of trees and when I want to get rid of them, I have an apprentice right now and I'm teaching and training him and we're raising some for sale, but it's a long process, but I do have some that I would be willing to get rid of, but I typically don't put it out there much for selling and stuff like that. So, um, if you do want one, you, the email address is below. You can, you know, we can get you something to go, but I can tell you this. You need to have more than one or you're going to kill it. That's all I got to tell you. That's just, that's like the general rule. I've been doing bonsai since I was in the fifth grade. No, sixth grade. My science teacher came in and <clears throat> said, I'm going to teach you about life. Here's a bonsai tree and I never put it down and I've killed thousands of them. But I've got some real gems too, so... You know, T-Cat, I think that's a good way to go about it. If it lives, it lives. I mean, that's just all you can do. All right, everybody. So as far as lives go, typically what I'll do is I'm going to do another one of these where I plan my summer garden and I'm probably going to do it sooner than later. Um, now that I have done it where I've linked it to my computer and everything, I'll try and put a notification out and possibly come on at a better time than just, you know, randomly, <laughs> but that's just how I operate. And, um, what we can do is when I do like repots or stuff like that, and I'm actually working, I'll sit down and I'll, I'll fire this bad boy up and we can talk, um, you know, that way it can have some question and answer time, stuff like that. So usually what it does is it goes on through the spring and I'm going to try my hardest to keep it going as long as I can throughout the year. I don't really know if I'm, you know, what that entails. I did want to do some, um, canning stuff and all that but there's so many moving parts for that and takes so long that we um you know it's just it's difficult for me so when do i start selling my transplants they're they're selling right now we're selling onions and cabbages right now um i put them on facebook marketplace so if you're local to my area and you want to come by hit me up on Facebook Marketplace. Um, I try to put a link on my Facebook page so that people that follow me can find it. I don't know. The last one I did didn't work out well, so I needed to redo that. Um, but we'll get that going. And if you guys want to come by and pick up some plants and stuff like that, and if you're a watcher, we can, you know, what, take you around. So the, our schedule for selling plants will be Right now we're selling onions in our first wave of cabbages. And then in about a month, we'll have our broccolis. And then once we get closer to the frost dates, everything will start coming out. So, you know, your tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, this, that, and the other. Stuff that we've found on the, um, that have sold well, will do. Um, I've got lettuces that should come out around the 15th of February and yeah, so the 15th of February is the next big wave and when it really starts. And then this year we're actually doing um, pollinator packs 
So what we're trying to do is get plants that are healthy for the bees and put those together and sell them. And if we can get enough going, what we're going to do is we may end up giving some away for free if you buy a certain amount of plants from us. So um, we're trying we're trying to figure that out. But I think it's more important to get healthy proteins into the pollinators because not all flowers are used appropriately by the pollinators. And I'm referring to bees. That's all I'm referring to, the honeybee. So we're trying to get that out. And um, so that's something that we're working on right now. And milkweeds, we just started some milkweed seeds for the monarch butterfly. And they, if they go well, they should be coming out soon as well. So we'll see how that goes. Um, oh, and we also have a couple of rosemary plants right now that are, um, they're, they're not even listed, but we'll probably list them once the weather starts to turn. Well, thank you everybody. And, um, I will try and be on at a better time when you guys are more available. I know people are at work and all that stuff. And, um, thank you for dealing with the troll guy was a dick. Um, but you know, it is what it is. I hope that the planter app helped you. Check out the link below. Give me a few minutes after YouTube processes it and I'll get it up. And it should be in the rest of my videos. Um, so hopefully if I've done it correctly, which I've known, I'm known not to do, but it should be in all of the video. Yeah, it's in all the videos. So it's get the planter app here and it has it on there. So, and the Amazon link is there too. And we really appreciate it. And I thank you guys for being here. We've seen a lot of growth lately and you guys have been so gentle and kind and I really do appreciate it. And um, I'm glad that you guys can handle my sarcastic attitude. It works out well. So um, thank you guys.